This is the magic of Steiff Schulte, maker of the fabrics that dreams are made of. Now owned by Steiff, this Duisburg-based company has been the provider of fine mohair, alpaca, and other woven fabrics for Steiff for more than a century. Recently, Steiff Schulte faced one of its most exciting challenges ever, the recreation of the materials for a unique paper teddy from 1919. This unusual bear accurately reflects the time period in which it was created. The outbreak of World War I caused immediate, significant changes at Steiff. Margareta's nephews, Paul, Richard, Hugo, and Otto, all members of the company's management, left the company to serve in the war. Traditional toy-making materials became scarce. Production of playthings virtually stopped. In 1918, when the war finally ended, the nephews returned to Gingen to continue building the company. Life at that time was very difficult for people in Germany. Even basic necessities were in short supply. When demand for Steiff products returned, the company was faced with a serious shortage of raw materials. Mohair and felt were simply unavailable. However, one material, wood, though an unconventional covering for teddy bears, was readily available. Could wood be used to create a type of fabric? Steiff decided to try and its results were successful. For a few post-war years, from 1919 through 1922, this fabric was used on core items, including elephants, cats, rabbits, dogs, play balls, and of course, teddy bears. In fact, 19,556 teddies were made in this most unusual material. Today, original examples of these bears are among the most sought after of all Steiff collectibles. So it is only natural that Steiff decided to recreate this bear for our collectors, some 90 years after the original was first introduced. It took almost five years of experimentation to get the design and materials just right to produce a replica of this most exceptional bear. Working with an original paper teddy from the Steiff archives, Steiff Schulte was able to redevelop the special paper plush exactly. It was a challenging task, to be sure, but we're sure you'll agree the end result is certainly worth the effort. The process begins with a unique paper thread or yarn, which is actually strips of paper twisted into long strings. 200 spools or cones of this special paper yarn are loaded onto a large frame, then threaded for transfer to a single, larger spool. The threading process takes almost an entire day. As the large spool, called a beam, is turned, each of the smaller spools is unwound. Should a thread break, the entire process must be stopped and then restarted again. The large, finished beam weighs as much as 400 kilograms. Once full, the completed beam is transferred to the weaving loom, one of many such machines at Schulte. At this stage, each loose thread must be tied with individual knots, all done by hand, before the weaving process can begin. This process is meticulous and time-consuming. Before starting the loom, workers carefully make adjustments to accommodate the paper material. Since the same looms are also used to weave mohair and alpaca, the machine must be carefully calibrated to handle the special challenges of paper thread. After the machine is properly cleaned, set, and all knots have been tied, the thread is ready to be woven into fabric. On the loom, Paper threads are intertwined with cotton threads using high-speed needles to form the woven fabric. The cotton thread forms a backing to help hold the paper fibers in place.
From the loom, the woven paper material is taken to quality control for its first evaluation. As the fabric is passed in front of a lighted panel, a technician thoroughly studies the material for any imperfections. Once the quality control process is complete, the fabric is ready for its trip to the dyeing department. Instead of regular fabric dyes, the paper material is colored with ink, which is precisely formulated to match the color of the original paper teddy from 1919. Fabric dyes would damage the paper fibers, so it's important that inks are used for coloring. The fabric enters the machine white since it was woven from white threads. It then emerges a short while later as a beautiful shade of sandy brown. After dyeing, a thin layer of glue is applied to the back of the fabric to ensure that all fibers are completely secure. The wet fabric is then fed into an elaborate drying machine that is four meters wide and 20 meters long. Gas-powered flames heat the oven to dry the fabric without damaging the fibers. The dried fabric is placed on a special machine equipped with rotating needles. This brushing process separates all fibers and makes the pile stand straight up. Brushed fabric is then passed through a shearing machine, which works like a knife to cut all pile to the same length. This makes the surface equal and smooth. The completed fabric passes through yet another quality control check to check for any imperfections in either weave or color. Finished fabric is rolled by machine, then packed into boxes for its trip to Gingen, where it will be made into teddy bears exclusively for Stife Club members. The Paper Teddy 1919 replica is a testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of Stife as a company. The original emerged from a time of adversity, illustrating how the company could overcome all obstacles. The replica emerges once again as a monument to Stife's ongoing dedication to quality and innovation. Stife and Stife Schulte, united to bring you what dreams are made of.